Hello and welcome everybody. Um, let me just click the OK for recording. So thank you for all for joining us tonight. Um, so um, you've just had Caroline with you there and I am Melissa, if you don't know me already. So you, a lot of you have probably spoken to me on the phone, but uh, I normally hide, but you've got me tonight. Um, so we've got question and answers with, with Blower tonight. So thank you everyone that has, has submitted questions in advance. We've squeezed as many as we can in on here, but we're hoping to have time at the end to have an open question and answer session. So feel free to give us a shout. Um, I'll, I'll whip through some bits and pieces. If there's anything you're not sure about, use the chat box. We'll, we'll try and uh, keep up with you, but there should be plenty of time at the end to be able to pick up and go through anything. Um, so one of the, the, the main questions I thought it would be nice to get out of the way is who are we about Blyer? So for those of you that don't know, we were established in May 2009 and the website blyerbullion.co.uk is online and available 24-7. Christmas Day, bank holidays, everything. So when the price is right, it's there ready for you whenever you want it. Um, we are around and we're here to help support you make the best decisions possible when it comes to buying and selling bullion um, and ultimately um, we aim to exist to demystify and make bullion investment more accessible to everyone for those of you that leave us fifo reviews thank you ever so much it is massively appreciated because um, these trusted review sites do help to build credibility and show people um, what the experience is as a customer from um, a real um, customer-facing point of view. So those FIFO reviews are invaluable to us and we're very, very grateful for all those people that spend the time to, to actually leave those reviews. Um, so we're still consistently at 4.9 out of five. So um, very proud of that. And thank you to everyone that takes the time to leave those reviews. A little bit of housekeeping, unfortunately, get the boring bit out of the way first. So um, please note precious metal prices may go down as well as up. Blyer Limited, or Blyer Bullion, accepts no responsibility for any losses based on information we have provided. We do not offer investment advice, but we share our experience and knowledge for the purpose of raising awareness. It's up to you to do your own research and if necessary, obtain professional advice before making an investment decision. So some of the questions, so I've laid some of these out, mixed it all up a little bit. Um, if we haven't quite got your drift, um, say, well, we'll scoop things up at the end and have a bit of an open hands up session at the end. So one of the questions that came through was, do we sell platinum? Yes, we do. So at the top of our homepage, when you visit our homepage, it would look like you will get the four boxes at the top of the page and a little gray or silver strip along the top. And you'll see the fourth one along is platinum. So when you click on that, it will drop down a little menu choice for you that you can go bars, coins, or just click the platinum and it'll take you to the whole range. With platinum, there are a few items on there at the moment that are is available for pre-order. So for any customers that aren't aware, pre-order um, items are items that can be ordered 24 seven because we know that those items are read readily available. The price is locked in at the time of your order and completed payment, and we process your order during office hours, and we will contact you to arrange delivery just as soon as that item arrives into stock. So hopefully that covers up one on Platinum. If anyone needs any help, just give us a shout later. Another question we had come in is, was, is it worth the extra premium to buy PCGS coins 65 to 70? I have not yet been tempted, but curious to know if there is any value in investing in these types of certified coins and whether there really is a market for resale that would reflect the higher premium paid. So grading, for those aren't aware, is a method of measuring the quality of a selected bullion coin. So it is still a bullion coin, but it's just measuring the quality for you. As to the value, it's subjective and the price you get when you sell is dependent on finding a buyer who is willing to pay an extra premium. The coins could achieve, would achieve a higher premium when sold privately rather than when with a dealer. 
Um, so you're looking for people that are looking to collect um, and things like that. A bullion dealer is going to, to deal with that as any other normal bullion grade coin. We don't pay premiums for graded coins, but we do pay a fair rate, which we always try to do when we buy back any bullion. Ensure that you're working with a reputable buyer or platforms to avoid scams or disputes. So always, always do your homework and your due diligence, check people's reviews um, when you're buying anything online. Graded coins can cost, for, for those that aren't aware, anything from £600 upwards compared to the price of, by, sorry, by the same bullion grade coin. So you just need to find out, there's nothing wrong with buying them if that's what you want, but you need to bear in mind where you might sell it um, and how, where, and all those questions when it comes to it at the other end of the, um, of the deal. So I'm hoping that, um, let me just move this box, hoping that covers that one. One of the other questions, we get asked this a lot as well in the office generally, I've been asked to provide ID, why is this? We don't like to have to ask for this information, we really don't, it, it poses some really awkward conversations sometimes, um, but yeah, we know that people find it intrusive, um, and some people are really quite happily, you know, to, to provide it, but we do know that it is a bit difficult for some people, they don't quite understand why. Um, so our independent reviews provide our customers, when I was talking about FIFO, with um, insights into us as a business. You can go onto FIFO, you can have a look and you can say, right, they're fairly reputable, they've been around for a while, they've got lots of reviews and you can find out a bit more and, and get the gist for a company. But obviously we don't have that advantage when we're dealing with customers. We don't really know who people are until we start building a relationship with them. Um, so as a reputable business, we have to demonstrate um, a good know your customer, so as a term in the business, um, and in many businesses, a know your customer policy. Um, so this gives our bank confidence, and it shows them that we're doing everything that we can to prevent fraud, because the type of business that we're in, as I'm sure as many people can appreciate, we're open to a lot of potential you know, targets because of the type of product that we sell. So we therefore ask customers who are making substantial orders, um, and sometimes, particularly for the first time, people that we don't really know, um, to provide IDs. This helps us to verify customer accounts. We don't pass on any of this information. Um, it stays in-house. And unless you move house, change your name, or something flags up to go, mm, okay, is this really um, Caroline? Um, then it'd be highly unlikely you'd be asked to provide it again. So I'm hoping that that answers that one. So um, it's not because we want to, it's just good practice. Why is silver price still lagging compared to gold? Um, so gold typically is a safe haven. So in economic downturn, um, it's a safe place to go. And it has limited uses um, other than the use for jewellery. Silver um, trends closer to the global economy than gold does, as half of all the silver that is used is used for the demands in the industry. Um, we can go into lots and lots of in-depth conversations about pricing and what's happening and who's holding things back and what's going on. Um, but there's, there's only a certain few people out there that's gonna really, really know sort of what's controlling a lot of the time. Um, but, but those are sort of the facts of how they trend. I've seen offers of bullion in Facebook groups and on eBay. Is it safe to buy from there? So it's all about your due diligence, the same as when you're buying from any company. And we'd hope that when you come to buy from us, that you would check us out and have a look at our reviews and things like that. Um, so scratch the surface, do a bit of investigative work. Who exactly are you buying from? What are their reviews? How many pieces have they sold? What are their reviews like? Um, what backing do you have should things go wrong? Because unfortunately, the world we live in, things do go wrong from time to time. So what support do you have? What's in place should anything go wrong? Um, is the offer too good to be true? Um, and sometimes we get excited by these offers and go, woohoo, look at that offer, it's fantastic. And then we've missed something really, really key. Um, 
that explains why it was too good to be true. And a lot of the time as well, if you're asking the question in the first place, then the answer is probably no. And if it doesn't feel right, just follow your gut instinct. Um, we can get quite excitedly led sometimes by offers and price, particularly because it's an investment product. But it's, it's good to stay grounded sometimes and just ask why. You know, why is it on such a good offer? Gold bars versus gold coins. What is better as an investment at the time you want to sell? Historically, bars would have been cheaper versus the equivalent weight in gold, but it's not always the case currently. Unless you're a collector or you prefer a coin or maybe you require CGT benefits, then the best option is to search any dealer site, not just us, um, for the metal weight that you require and filter by price low to high. And if anyone needs any help sort of looking on the website and navigating around, then certainly give us a show and, and we can give you a little tutorial on some little quick wins on finding your way around the website. Um, more than happy for people to give us a show and we can walk you through that. But generally that's the best way is to go by weight, filter price low to high, um, and when I looked earlier at the time of putting um, this together, in comparison with a, a one girl, sorry one ounce gold Kruger Rand mixed year coin, it was six pounds seventy three pounds sorry six pounds seventy three cheaper than the one ounce gold Yumacore good condition bars. So bars aren't always cheaper. It's about looking around. Our industry changes really, really quickly. Products change quickly. Prices change quickly. So just keep looking around and just use the filter options just to find out, uh, has a bar snuck in at a cheaper price than a coin or is the coin cheaper than the bar? Um, as long as you're not looking for something in particular, then um, that's a good way of searching. At the end of the day, an ounce of gold is an ounce of gold, regardless of how it's presented. Do you buy Thai and Chinese gold? So we buy bullion grade coins and bars, and feel free to send us any sale inquiries to sales at blower.co.uk. Where possible, send any images, give us as much information as you can, and we'll see if we can help um, assist you with your sale. So hopefully it covers up. Why is the coin or bar price higher than spot price? Spot price is not the raw mined metal price. This price is calculated from average bid prices by worldwide traders. And the bullion we sell is a retail product. So like any other product, it has costs involved in getting it to market. Yeah. So for example, there's design costs, manufacture, transportation, marketing, photography, insurance, staffing, wages, the list goes on and on and on. So, so within that product, there is an element of cost to get it on, on its route to market. I've been collecting silver Britannias, but my wife has bought me some Krugerrands. Does it matter if you have different types of bullion? Are some likely to gain or hold more value than others? So first of all, your wife's a keeper um, to make me smile because if she's buying you silver full stop, regardless of what it is, um, she's on the same wavelength and she's supporting you in what you're doing. So, so yeah, she, you've got a fantastic wife there. Um, but on to answer the question seriously, if Kruger, although crew brands are not UK legal tender, and don't have the CGT advantages of Britannia's, they're very popular coins. And the same as we were just saying on the, the previous slide, an ounce of silver is an ounce of silver. Um, and especially when it's received as a gift, it's free silver. Do you ever stock and sell proof gold coins? What's the difference between regular coins and proof coins? We do sell proof coins. Mm. The easiest way to find these um, through our website is there's a search box on the top right of um, the page. And if you just type the word proof into the website, it will display all of our listings easily for you. We do have a collectible page. Um, we were talking about this earlier, and admittedly, we, we don't always remember to, to attribute all of these collectibles in the one group. Um, and we decided that the easiest way is just to type the word proof and anything we have in the stock that is of proof quality will come up for you. So the difference between the bullion grade coin and the proof coin 
Um, proof coins have been struck several times, whereas a bullion coin is only struck once. So this makes them a bit more expensive to produce than the bullion coin because there's more work in it. It may have a frosted appearance. There's sharper, more detailed engraving, and these are recommended for collectors rather than investment opportunities. When is the best time to buy? There isn't a magic formula. Um, however, if you're confident in the product you're buying and where you're buying it from, you have safe storage. You know where you're going to keep it, where you're going to put it. And when the price is right, which is obviously key for, for most, you know, the main consideration, then that's the best time for you. Um, the, the, we have people that buy in haste um, and we, we do talk with people and and sometimes the people that buy in haste aren't, are doing it from an emotional level rather than an intellectual level. So it's always good just to have a good consideration, know what you're doing, what you're looking at, be nice and calm about it. And if it feels like you're making a regretful buy, um, then that's not a great time. Just it's when you're confident and happy and you have everything in place. We're around as well if you want to have a chat. We're more than happy to have a chat any time to go through strategy or advice. We would never tell you exactly what to buy because that would be wrong, but we could help answer questions and, and just go through the uh, process with you. In a volatile market, which we've been experiencing quite a bit, it's also worth considering a cost averaging buying strategy. So this is buying small amounts more frequently rather than buying large amounts infrequently. And then the price will average through the peaks and troughs. I have been reading about bail into banks and I'm concerned that my savings account isn't as safe as I thought. Would buying bullion be a sensible option instead? I have 60,000 pounds. So consider your savings investments, sorry, savings and investments portfolio. So as a whole, what do you have around you to support you? We recommend diversity. So it's that old saying of not putting all your eggs into one basket. These scenarios for us are easier to talk about um, on the phone or on a video call because everybody is different and everyone is individual. Everybody has different lifestyles, everyone has different expenses, history, plans, family, loads of different factors that come in, other investments, portfolios. So these conversations are really, really good to have with customers so that we can we can help give you a bit more food for thought, maybe, and, and help you out where we can. So if there is anyone sort of thinking about this and going, oh, I'm not really quite sure what to do. Is this a good idea? Then give us a call. That's what we're around for. Um, drop us an email if um, you're unsure and we'll come back to you and arrange um, time with you and see what we can do to help you out. I can invest in silver now, or I could wait for a few months to save up for gold. What's the better option? So both are good options. The decision would largely be influenced by your strategy. So pretty much similar to the previous question is about um, what you've got already, what your plans are, what you're looking to buy for, um, and whether or not you're looking at a short term strategy or a long term strategy. Um, so again, it's, it's asking yourself lots of questions. Why are you investing in precious metals? Is it long or short term? Is it for pension? Is it for confidence? Are you looking at trading? Um, so just to explain if there's anybody that's not sure. So there are a lot of people that will be buying pieces of silver because they, they believe, and there are some communities in fact at the moment that are trading in silver. So they're buying um, goods and services with silver. Not massively, I hasten to add, not mass there's not loads of people doing it, but there are small communities of people that are. Um, again, this is something that would be good to discuss with the team and where it's what we do day in, day out. If you want to have a chat about anything um, like that, give us a shout, drop us an email, give us a shout, um, and we'll be more than happy to have a chat with you. Do you advocate wearing your wealth in jewellery as in some Asian countries? Um, so I'll answer this to as best as we thought, but if we haven't quite hit the mark on this, because it was a little bit, we weren't quite sure what the, 
what you were trying to get at on this. So as a company, yeah, we're accepting embracing all cultures, opinions and beliefs. An advocate is quite a strong word. Um, if somebody, an individual was to be wearing it as a piece of jewellery, we would obviously be advising people to be considering their own safety for one um, and looking at insurance. Um, but yeah, as far as suggesting people wear it as, as um, a show of wealth, then that's a personal decision, really. That, that comes down to personal choice. Um, so we're not sure whether or not you were looking at whether or not we would promote that people do that or whether or not we thought it was a good idea. Um, so whether or not you, you think it's a great idea, that it is a personal decision. Um, but from a business point of view and an investment point of view, it's worth knowing that the markup on gold jewellery, especially in the UK, is very high. Um, so it wouldn't be as good as an investment as buying bars and coins. Um, so if you did submit that question and we haven't quite hit that, then please reach out and um, we can have a bit more of a chat and and see if we can help you any further. I've got quite a stack of silver and need to think about storage. What's the best solution? I want to keep it in my house rather than off site. So we've got... Um, one of our, our most read blogs, it's up there on number one every single month when, when we go to have a look at what people are looking at. Um, and if you haven't read it yet, it's in our blog section, um, in our, uh, it's in the about section, I do believe. It's called 20 Secret Places to Store Your Bullion. It's fab, it's quite inventive, and there's some quite surprising um, places that, that people store their bullion um, around the house. So it's a very interesting read. Again, if anyone is signposting to it, reach out to us, we can send you a link over to it so you can have a look. Um, but home safes are a brilliant addition and not just for your bullion, we have lots of valuables around the house that is actually quite handy to have something nice and secure um, at times just to keep everything together. And if you wanted to view the range that we have, um, again, on the home page where you've got the silver bar across the top, if you go over to other, so fifth one along, and then hover over that, it will drop down the menu, and at the bottom, you will see safes and cabinets. So if you click on that, it will take you through to our full range. But if you need any help or more information, again, contact our team, and they will be able to, to help you out. Um, if you are looking for more information again, Next month, we have um, a webinar with a special guest, which will be um, one of our colleagues from SecuraKey, and they will present, be presenting their products and giving lots of information um, and top tips from SecuraKey Direct. So I'm going to just thank you for, for joining us this evening here right now, because I'll open up to, to any other questions that we have. Um, I know that there were a few late entries come in this afternoon, so we couldn't quite squeeze you all into to the presentation at the time. Um, so I'll open up and people can, can shout if you want to, or drop us a line after the webinar just to say, you know, ask us your questions, give us a call. Um, it's not good because we don't want to answer, it's probably because we just missed you. So as, a, as mentioned, the next webinar is with SecuraKey. Um, so we'll be looking at your home storage needs, but we'll also be giving you information regarding third party secure storage solutions so that you don't have to have it stored at home and you can have it in a third party location. So we'll give you more information about that. And that date is Tuesday, the 18th of June at 7.30. Um, so we can, um, we'll be sending out the link for that. That will start coming out in the newsletters after today. So thank you very much. I hope that we managed to answer your questions um, to satisfy your needs. And thank you for, for listening to me rattle through that, but I'll open up the floor to see if there's any questions. So Austrian Philharmonicas, are these good values and investment, please, if they're not British CGT applicable? Um, again, you know, they're, they're a good, widely recognized coin, the same as the crew grounds that we were mentioning earlier, one of the popular ones there. You don't have your CG, CGT um, exemption on those coins, but they come out at a good price mainly 
Um, so if you're looking for a good priced coin and they're available, then they're widely recognized. There's no reason, but just be careful. But if you are looking for something at CGT, they haven't got the exemption on those coins. Um, Sarah, do you do gold backs? We don't, um, but I can come back to you, Sarah, because Caroline may be able to give you more information about if there is anyone that we can direct you or signpost you to. Um, we, we uh, oh yeah, Richard's asking, what are gold backs? Um, I'd recommend Googling them. They're quite interesting. They are a, a note that is made of gold. Um, they're rather beautiful. So I would say they were collectible pieces. Um, they're used as exchange tokens. But when you look at how much gold is in them, um, as, a, as a piece of gold in itself, they are a very expensive way of buying gold. Um, it's uh, the you know we would say with the smaller coins, for example, the markup on them is quite high. With the gold backs, it's even higher as a percentage. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think if they were adopted as a means of exchange, and you know, perhaps you would apply this to silver coins <coughs> or silver pieces. That rather than being sold back to a dealer, they were circulated within a community as a method of exchange. They, um, you know, they're not easily replicated. So from that point of view, you know, they've got some value there. But um, I kind of think I don't I don't think the place for them is comparing them actually with physical hard gold um, that you know could be melted down as such and turned used as another piece. It's not quite the same thing. Thank you, Caroline. So there's a question in, it says, I've been buying Britannia's now silver for a few years. I see that quarter and 10th ounce coins are available. Are these still offered by the mint? Due to historic bartering practices as being smaller denominations rather than an ounce coin, would holding some of these be advantageous moving forward to complement my collection? So they are still being minted. Yes, we have 2024 quarter ounce and tenth ounce silver coins. They're available in stock at the moment. Um, it depends if you're looking for um, smaller denominations. So we were talking earlier about people trading um, and things like that. There is certainly a market out there where people are buying smaller denominations. It's also good to be diverse. Um, you have lots of, to play with. Um, I like layman's terms a lot of the time. So um, talking to customers, I would liken your bullion portfolio sometimes when if you're thinking about... Um, trading as like having a fiat wallet so if you've got smaller pieces and larger pieces you've got your pound coins your 50ps your five pound notes things like that it's the same thing that people are doing with um some of their strategies with buying silver they're buying the smaller pieces pretty much the same as you would have change in a fiat wallet the only thing to be careful of is they can be costly because of the production cost, um, the smaller coins are more intricate, they cost more to, to come to market. So if you're buying an ounce fractionally, it will be more expensive than buying one ounce. So um, that would be something that you would need to, to weigh up. But um, yep, they're still CGT, still offered by the men and they're all still in stock. Um, hopefully that answered the next question as well. If Fiat one day failed, would these prove popular for bartering, et cetera? Yep, quite possibly. There's um, a large community out there that are already trading and, and dealing and looking at um, bits and pieces to do just that. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily just say if Fiat failed. I think if there's just some communities that believe that that's how they want to trade. Um, but yep. Yeah. You know, th there is a train of thought that it could possibly. Yeah, if anyone, if anyone is out there and wants to say just hi, please, please do. Um, but like Melissa said, we're around to answer your questions on a one-to-one -one basis. If that's a bit more helpful, and we can tailor the answer to suit your own personal situation. 
So don't be frightened, pick up the phone. Yeah, there, there definitely isn't just a one fit answer for, for everybody. Everybody is completely, completely different. Um, and, um, you yeah, know, never feel too shy to pick up the phone to ask um, because everyone starts somewhere. Everyone has a question. If you don't know, then that's what we're here for. So um, it gives a shout. Are there any more questions before we close? Yes, thank you ever so much for your time um, and coming to, to see us tonight. Hopefully we've given you some more information, answered your questions, but please do reach out to us. It's what we're, what, what we're around for. Um, and uh, we look forward to catching up with you guys on the either the next webinar, phone or uh, by email. Have a lovely evening, everybody. Thank you.